we'll have to see if that actually is a factor over the course of this series, though we're in champ select now. Yeah, and picks and bans are underway for game number one. Gold Coin United and e United both have been able to play through different aspects of their team. A lot of the time we focused on the mid lane, but the support and the bottom lane have definitely been big targets as well. We've seen a lot of the uh, support pool kind of fall away, but Malzahar is still one of those really big champions, especially for Madlife himself. Seeing that and the Varus band away from MASH is no surprise from the United side. Right, and then the uh, LeBlanc Shen bans. LeBlanc generally just a red side ban, but Shen is one that Licorice uh, busted out last week and mm. it looked extremely strong. Uh, we generally talk about him being mostly a tank player. We've seen the best performances out of Licorice on things like Maokai, Poppy, and the Shen. Yeah, and that Shen being manned away. The one last ban, though, for Gold Coin United, it might be targeted at Rise, which is something that Fox has definitely oh, wow. played a lot of, but it is going to be a Karma ban, so once again, hitting those support pools, but it looks like Rengar is going to be the first one picked up by United, prioritizing that over the Rise. Yeah, it's interesting to see that they do that. We talk about how good Fox's Rise is. I believe he was 7-0 and on it over mm -hmm. the course of the Challenger series, so obviously he's a threat, and we see United actually often prioritize the... Uh, Rengar over it, allowing Gold Coin United to grab that, as well as the Lulu, a pick that's risen in priority quite heavily recently. Yeah, so Lulu was an undefeated champion for Zazel himself. He's been playing that pretty much with every sort of AD carry pairing in that bottom lane matchup, but it has kind of been also been that counteraction to the Malzahar, which was banned away. But he himself and Deathly have been really bully centric when going for that one. So that's something that Gold Coin United wanted to target down. They steal that away. Phoenix himself has been no slouch on the rise. Of course, he knows how to play that one, but it's going to be Fox picking the counter matchup here with the Cassiopeia, which is something that we did see. See Phoenix using last week. I actually think this is a really interesting champ select already. The fact that a lot of people are comboing the Rengar and the Lulu together, so you see Gold Coin United break that up. We also know that uh, Fox will just blind pick the rise into almost anything. Mm -hmm. This makes uh, Gold Coin United pressure to take it, so they grab it early on, and that opens up the counter pick in the Cassiopeia. Now, once again, you might be seeing a lot of attention at six coming at the rise who can struggle against that Cassiopeia early. Well, they've also locked in the Soraka for United side, and that was a huge enabler for their games against Big God's Jackals. Once it hit the 15 minute mark, there were constant constant fights, and then the utility of this rocket to keep everybody topped off after these scrappy engagements was massive for them snowballing their advantage. Yeah, and now we see that there's a little bit of a desync first round of the pick ban phase. E United having a jungler, Gold Coin United having an AD carry, so no surprise to see the Ash ban. That's also something Deathly has had some of his biggest performances on. Uh, for the most part, E United doesn't force super hard around bot lane. It's more in the mid late game. He's able to snipe out a lot of people and start fights for E United. And definitely has definitely been more of the utility style of player. The Varus has been away. It's something he actually shot away from throughout the Challenger series. The Ash, the Ezreal, the Caitlyn, which was picked away here by Gold Coin United, are the ones that he will usually tends to go towards. And the Ezreal ban is going to come up from Gold Coin United. So this might be something new we're going to have to see out of Deathly. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, also, like we were just saying, uh, United having their jungler taken already. No surprise to see a bunch of jungler bans. So Gold Coin United going to have to grab either their top laner or jungler here. No surprise to the jungler giving their top laner the ability to get that counter pick last. And uh, yeah, like you were saying, the, the Caitlyn that definitely usually played, the, the Lulu Caitlyn was a lane we saw at United a couple games in a row, and they were able to start smashing turrets around six, seven minutes into the game. So mm -hmm. going to see if e United can, or Gold Coin United can actually pressure that hard now that they have their hands on that matchup. E United look like they're hovering the Sivir, probably going to go with that one. One of the best picks available after the amount of bans that have already been thrown at the AD carry position. Yeah, it's the only other AD carry that definitely has actually played throughout the North American Challenger series. So that's no surprise to see him pick that one up, although it is going to synergize extremely with the Rengar. You might not have the Lulu to speed him up and make him big, but you got the Sivir ultimate, so the thrill of the hunt goes on the hunt. Yeah, and we've locked in the last two picks pretty quickly there with the Rumble and the Camille, so we're getting a very skill-intensive matchup on the top side. Uh, and Ooh. we talked, uh, I talked a little bit to Broken Shard uh, after their series, yeah, last week, and you know, we were talking about, oh, Licorice is a great tank player. He says he doesn't even consider Licorice a tank player. <laughs> He's actually more of a carry player, and we hadn't seen too much of that in the Challenger series, so we're gonna get a look at it tonight and hopefully we get to see him live up to the hype. Yeah, I'm actually really interested to see that because Licorice is 0-2 and two on what we consider carry champions. Jason Kennan, he played throughout the split, didn't win a single game, and was undefeated on tank champions. So now we get to see him on the Rumble. Solo played the opposite side of this matchup last week versus Quas, and when we interviewed him, he was like, hey, how'd you guys like the 4v4 cast? So I'll have to see if Solo's going to be in the same kind of split push situation, trying to pull Licorice away from his team, because Licorice has been an integral part of United's game plan with his teleport usage. Yeah, it's often kind of Licorice up on the top side farming way on the tank, and then once that mid-game starts uh, setting up, they, they set up a very nice 1-3-1 on the side of United. They play that uh, lane setup extremely well, and then they're able to convert that into advantages. So we'll have to see if they're able to do something similar here, though their comp is light, uh, pretty different. Yeah, the compositions are quite different from what we're used to seeing from both of these teams. However, we have seen a lot of adaptation from both of those squads, and that is what led them here to these Challenger Finals. Both of these teams have shown 
very good versatility in utilizing different kinds of compositions, and I'm really excited to see what United can do without that rise pick and that global pressure. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is that United are definitely playing uh, a different comp from we're used to seeing. No tank in the top lane, no rise in the mid lane, and the only globals that they have available to them are really the Soraka pick. So mm -hmm. gonna have to see how they play this one out. All right, so we'll have to see what both of these teams can wind up doing as we're about to jump on the rift for game number one. It's the North American Challenger Series Finals. One of these teams is going to take the victory. The other team will follow them into the promotion tournament, but they're going to have a little bit more of a difficult time doing it. So why don't we jump into game? And here we are in game one. I'm super excited to see how this mid lane matchup actually plays out. We've been hyping it up a little bit, and I think for good reason. They just have such different styles in terms of how their team plays the games out, but both play through mid lane. So, you know, Gold Coin United, they, they take things slow and steady. Phoenix usually gets an advantage on his own. Then you see Mad Life and Santorum grouping up to get a lot of vision control. E United force a ton of plays around mid, try and mm -hmm. blow that open, and then go elsewhere on the map. So two totally different styles, but still mid-centric. Yeah, both of these teams will definitely be looking to funnel advantages through the mid lane. We have the established EU synergy of Fox and Gilius from their time on Shalka. They, of course, have played together for a very long time, but it's going to be very interesting to see where Santorin prioritizes the map. Phoenix is the obvious choice to go for. Gold Coin United, we always say they play a very slow and steady controlled style. Interestingly enough, 10 to 15 minutes is their period of time where when they set up that vision, they gain advantages and normally don't lose it. It usually is United, the ones lagging behind, that needs that first blood, that needs that first tower to really open up the map, and they utilize Defly and Zazel to do that. Right, and I think something that's good for United is the fact that they're able to play a little bit from behind or, or an even situation. There's been times where they take that rise early on mm -hmm. in a, a less than favorable matchup, and then they have to deal with not being up pressure in the first 10 minutes of the game. And they actually played through that pretty well, uh, and then eventually they start being able to make plays because they're pretty relentless when they look for them. So you're going to have to see if Phoenix can hold on the lane or maybe even turn those because we've seen them do it. Mm -hmm. We've definitely seen Phoenix be the... The receiving end of a lot of first ganks, but the recipient of the first blood kill more often than not. Whereas it is e United who come into this match with eight first bloods themselves, and a lot of them centered around that Gilius and Fox synergy. So we'll have to see which one of those two mid laners winds up falling the first blood first, if that's even where they go. Because we do have a Camille in this game, and Camille has been a thrill to watch when she gets through in the Challengers. Yeah, I mean, we talk about the mid lane a lot, but this is actually a pretty different uh, draft than I think we were expecting. Not much utility in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, sure, Sivir is more of a utility to carry, but she has a tough match matchup versus the longer range Caitlyn, and then there's the carry versus carry uh, matchup in the top side where, generally speaking, teams like to prioritize a lot of aggression early on, though we see Phoenix getting a much better trade yeah. than Fox. Speaking of aggression early on, Phoenix, as soon as he hits that level two bonus, knows that he can get up in the face of Fox. Cassiopeia has some very short cooldowns, but Rise is gonna be even shorter when you wind up hitting those overlords on the target over and over again. All right, and so Phoenix being able to grab control of this lane matchup early, already has all the pots burned out of Fox. It's going to be hard for Cassiopeia to really regain the lane pressure after getting chunked so hard and Phoenix still having a potion available to him. He does have Gilius near the mid lane though, has been going for that red buff, started on blue. Whereas on the flip side, Santorin has started for his red buff option, decided to clear out the entire top side of the jungle. These are two different kinds of styles that we've seen. Gilius tends to favor to buff the buff star and then doesn't recall immediately, whereas Santorin he kind of carries his legacy with him. He's a little bit more of a farm-centric jungler. He goes for the full clear on the top side before he even visits him. Right, but I like uh, what Gold Coin United did early on. You saw Phoenix drop a ward down that bot. River Brush around the mid lane, gave able to get some vision out early. That was something he used to struggle with back in his time in the LCS, was he was uh, a relatively easy gank, and that could get him in trouble with his aggressive nature. Uh, and I think Gold Coin United's early game plan is really nice here. We see the early ward out of Phoenix. Santorin clears up his whole topside jungle and might be able to assist around the mid lane where Phoenix is continuing to put down some pressure. Yeah, procs a bit of a shield, gets a little bit more damage down on the Fox. Both of these mid laners will want to wait until they can get their tier of the goddess to wind up going back, but it looks like it's going to be the mid lane of GCU forcing back Fox a little bit early on because he dropped way too low. Has to go for the double Doran's by not even going for the tier. Yeah, it's tough to deal with. Obviously, you want to get that tier off your first purchase, start stacking that up right away. I'm sure Phoenix will not back until he has enough. And on the bot lane, definitely doing a good job trading, playing mm -hmm. the matchup relatively aggressively. I like the way they're doing it. You see Zazel mostly hovering in the back, setting up those heals that we see Santora making his way down here for a gank attempt onto Zazel, he's behind him. Yeah, the flash forward for Madlife trying to get the glitter lane slow down. A flash forward for Santorum, but the heal is there to save Zazel. Now it's Santorum getting turned around on. The heal has to be used by MASH as well. So the first gank comes out of Santorum, but it's turned around by E United. Yeah, slight overextension there by Santorum actually forces out summoners from Gold Coin United, meaning that that gank actually results in no tangible advantage 
oh, there may be a small uh, health advantage against Azel, but all summoners burned aside for the flashes on the 80 carries. Yeah, so definitely blew his own heals. Azel burning both of his summoner spells. As you mentioned, the flash being burned from Santorin means that it is a net advantage on that bottom side for E United. Although the immobile support in Soraka may wind up getting a repeat gank sooner or later. We'll have to see. He's now definitely again, feels like he can get a little bit aggressive. He's got the heals from the Soraka on the backside. Makes this lane a little bit more livable for Sivir, because normally Caitlyn and Lulu, it's like the quintessential bully lane. Right, and you also see that that uh, early gank by Santorin does not go unpunished. Ilias moved up to the top side, got some deep vision, stole away the Raptors, getting himself a little bit of a CS lead here. Krug's respawning, though. Probably not going to go for that one. And in the top lane, uh, generally speaking, Rumble has advantage uh, in this matchup early on. He can definitely push mm -hmm. as we see the two junglers bump into each other. Ilias gonna get a little aggressive going into his opponent's jungle, forcing Santorin to not only use a control ward, but hop over the wall away. So small advantages there. Ilias himself has uh, been known to be a bit aggressive, but speaking of some aggression, Phoenix and the exhaust being thrown down by Fox. No man Has to burn the flash as well. So the Cassiopeia, like you mentioned, very low mana, gets aggressive on Phoenix, but Phoenix He's not backing down. He's just gonna turn around and put it back in his face. I mean, that's what we're talking about with Phoenix. Is he takes a lot of these matchups that you think generally go in favor of a certain champion. We saw him do it versus LeBlanc before, where he was able to bully extremely early on. He played Cassie or uh, Orient to Ca uh, Cassio and won that one pretty easily. And now we see Gilius roaming in from that top that he was just invading on. Yeah. Meanwhile, top side looks like the equalizer gonna get thrown down by Lakers trying to burn through solo. Gets a level six advantage. Wants to try to push that out. Most likely, just gonna get a recall off. But Phoenix. Did dodge out that gank, even though Gilius was not spotted by the ward in the river. Phoenix did the smart thing and just slowly walked away from the ring. Did have to burn the flash to get over the wall, though. Luckily, he was able to force out foxes earlier on, so he's not actually at a real summoner disadvantage. Still has the heal available. And a little surprising to see that, but there are no uh, ignites on the side of E United. A lot of Cassiopeias do go for the Morello Nomicon, so I'm sure they'll get some kind of healing reduction at some point. Yep, speaking of some healing, uh, Soraka with the very oh, right. the very often seen level three roaming heal gank. Yeah, the, 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 the top ambulance. Top lane. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking in, make sure you're healthy. You get a movement speed bonus if you're running towards a target like that, so I guess it's sort of effective. But Yeah, you want to get low in lane so you can speed up your <laughs> Soraka roams. It's a great strategy. Hey, man, an AD carry went back at the same exact time, picked up a BF sword for herself, so that means that Soraka had a little bit of time on our hands before getting a recall off herself. Both of those AD carries have gone back and purchased BF swords for each other. So that's going to be itemization coming in the bot lane. We saw, of course, Phoenix going back and picking up a tier of the goddess for himself, getting that one a little bit ahead of his lane opponent in Fox, who we forced out earlier on. Fox, though, is going to go back and get his own blue buff pass over him. Without the tier of the goddess to start stacking up right now, this blue buff might not be as valuable as it could have been at this point. For sure, and even though the gold lead is, is pretty much even, you can see that already Gold Coin United are grabbing some advantages. The fact that they already have the tier stacking up on their mid laner when both of them are uh, tier stacking champions, as well as having a ton of vision control set up in that bot river and bot jungle on the side of E United. We talked about how Santorin and Mad Life like to group up and get a lot of vision down early on. This is perfect for Phoenix's play style when he wants to just bully 1v1. His team sets him up giving him the freedom to do so with that deep vision. Yeah, and absolutely everything is lit up on the bottom side of the map. So Goldcorn United, point to their strengths. You mentioned how much of a ward-centric team they are. They have Santorin and Madlife grouping up for a large chunk of that vision control. Now it looks like Santorin fancies himself to be the invader here, going for the red buff on a respawn on the United side. And Gilius, though, is making his way over. Yeah, there might be a fight over this one. No vision of each other quite yet. Oh, Santorin's going to wind up smiting that one down, but Gilius... Fancies himself to a little bit of a trade. Mad Life has come over here. The throw of the hunt's gonna get popped over. Looks like that Fox is coming down. The Miaz is gonna cut off Santorum. They're gonna jump on him, and first blood goes over to Fox. The paralyzing gaze also locked down on the Mad Life Lulu with a teleport coming in from the top. That's gonna be another kill, but they do give one over to Phoenix at the same time. Solo has joined the fray as everybody's piling into the Hexic ultimatum, but Fox will pick himself up another kill. Now they've turned on to Phoenix, who's caught between a rock and a hard place. He winds up going down. First blood and more go to United. United take a four for one, just eight and a half minutes into the game in their bot side jungle. We talk about their mid jungle synergy. It was a great roam by Fox, despite being mostly disadvantaged in his lane matchup, is able to get there in time, to help cut off the escape of Santorin, who was chunked low. Lulu, not six available, did not have her ult available to, to kind of give some extra support there to Santorin, who's gonna go down. And really well played by Gilius. Gets the bola here to root him in place, pops his ult. He's very patient, waiting for his mid laner to get into position. And the roaming licorice comes down, able to save his TP for this play critically. So they're gonna have TP advantage after this as well. Yeah, so licorice roaming down from the top lane. Solo winds up burning his own. The Miasma there to cut off Sam Torrin's escape was very crucial because it funneled them all directly into that equalizer. And Solo couldn't even get the Hexic ultimatum off 
before any of his teammates wound up going down, and because of that, it was just an easy collapse from United. Yeah, United grabs now about a thousand gold lead. They're still uh, down a lot of CS in the bot lane, like we're saying. A very tough matchup for Sivir, especially once the BF sword is mm -hmm. grabbed by the Kaelin. The fact that you, the big problem that you run into is that Kaelin gets a lot of free auto attacks off against you, and once she starts getting a little bit more of that AD those auto attacks are hurting a lot more. So yep. the, the chunk get worse and uh, the push gets even stronger with her Q spam. It's obviously Sivir's a great wave for a champion, but kind of hard to do if you can't walk up and auto the wave. It's very, very true. His e United have gotten more advantages than just their itemization off of that one. I kind of have like a checklist of e United's early game pressure. Goldcorn United generally has the lead or a larger lead at 10 minutes, whereas e United is just right behind them. So they've gotten that. So e United gets the early game lead. They've gotten the first blood. This is their ninth of the entire challenger split. Now that's all that's on the list is to uh, get their first tower, which with that pushing power from the Sivir could be something that they look to go gab. I mean, definitely has been the kind of the tower bot, the first tier tower bot for forever on this team. And we'll see if they wind up doing it. One thing I don't actually have is their uh, first dragon stat, although they are one of the teams that take the most dragons in the challenger. Right, we did see also Gold Queen United having extremely strong uh, Dragon Control uh, numbers as well. This time, not going to be able to really contest this. They're a lot weaker down in the bot lane. They have to worry about Teleport Advantage still being available on the side of E United. They're going to have to play this a little bit more defensively for the next couple of minutes until they get some summoners back up. Um, and we want to see if E United can actually snowball with this summoner advantage. It can be hard to do so. We see a lot of trading down the top side. Solo opens up a little bit, gets traded back on. Not, nothing too big happening in the top side. A little surprising given that usually when you see mm -hmm. Rumble Camille, the uh, teams try and gank that pretty heavily to get one of those guys ahead. So maybe we'll see it here now with Santorin up in the top side. Oh, Santorin does make himself known. Actually going to land the Sun of Great Resident Strike. The ultimatum goes down immediately, and Licker is going to get collapsed on. They are fighting in the Equalizer, though, and Licker is ready to kill. He gets the flash away. He doesn't get slowed. He does. The Flame Spitter is on, but Solo picks up a kill, but Licker turns it around. Oh my god, Zazel's uh, Soraka ultimate was just enough to keep Licker alive and keep them sat on top of that Equalizer that gave him enough time to burn down Santorin. And then if he landed that harpoon, he might have actually been able to turn that for a two for one. So Gold Coney Knight have to be pretty happy to get out with just that. Now we see that jungle pressure. Well, Gilius goes on the hunt there, and Phoenix and get locked up. Is going to wind up barely surviving that one. Still has his heal and his flash available. There's still a lot of pressure now being exerted by EU United from multiple sides of the map. And you were the one who said this before. You talked to Broken Shard, and he said, hey, you know, we think Lickers is actually more of a carry player. I can kind of see why he'd say that now. Yeah, I mean, that gank looked like it was going to be pretty free for Gold Coney United, but not taking into account the Sorak ultimate being able to keep him healthy as well as just how much damage they were going to take at the same time. So well played, good communication between the team there. And uh, overall, United looking pretty strong, still sitting at that 1,000 gold lead. Not able to grab a turret quite yet, but you see that they have that aggressive playmaking that they just force around mid lane. Sure, they don't get a kill, but they are able to force uh, Phoenix back. So you see this gank attempt again. Yeah, and this was the setup here. It looked really good for Goldcoin United, but you mentioned that Soraka wish coming in right there to save Licorice. Yeah, and to an extent, it was actually pretty interesting to see the uh, Lee Sin ult kick him, but he doesn't actually go anywhere due to the uh, the Hextech ultimatum down. So he was still in range of the Flame Spitter for, for that entire duration. Well, Solo, even though Licorice did wind up getting a kill on that gank, undeterred to continue the trades going forward, now picking up that Sheen, but Santorin gonna find Gilius in his jungle. Sonic Wave takes the ending strike because he has Phoenix coming in. The Flash Rune Prison will land. Gilius gonna get collapsed on the Paralyzing Gaze Overwall from Fox will not save his jungler, but Zazel's joined the fray. Now they'll trying to heal up Fox for as long as possible. He does get polymorphed and will wind up going down. Mad Life gets a kill credit for that. Licorice teleports Thank in, but Mash has roamed up as well, and E-United are feeding kills over to GCU. Now it's to Cole Cohen United starting to make a play in the bot side. They get a three for zero off, punishing the jungle invade of Gilius. Obviously, Gilius was able to chunk out Lee Sin early on in that trade, but Gold Coin Unite react faster and are able to collapse onto the Rengar, which starts that whole fight out. And this is kind of what we we're talking about, why it's so surprising to see uh, this matchup around the mid lane. Gold Coin United are the aggressor, or uh, E United's the aggressors, and Gold Coin United just trying to absorb it. it looks like Gilius is trying to get a little control over the control wards, and we said that they have a lot of aggression from the side of E United, but this is a little too relentless and aggressive. Right, it's just uh, not great communication about the fact that Lulu could be roaming first. Uh, Zazel was there pretty early on as well, but the Rise Realm Warp being able to cut off the Cassiopeia to make sure that he can get into range first. He had a nice flash follow up route, and then Licorice should have canceled this TP. And as much as we talk about how he's looked good on carry so far, 
TPing in as a tank a little late, usually not as big of a deal, gets blown up there on the rumble. Yeah, unfortunately did not wind up uh, using any of his abilities. His ultimate was still available to get money for a trap, and now Licker's gonna get jumped on again. Drakowicz is available, but he will turn it around again! He picks up another kill on a 1v2 situation. Now he's got the scrap shield going, but it will be Solo who picks up a kill. Yeah, it's almost the exact same situation as last time. Santorin opens up with a nice gank attempt. We see the Soraka ult keeping the Rumble healthy, and then he's able to burn through the squishy Lee Sin. But this is an awful for the Camille overall. Uh, the fact that she is able to pick up a lot of these kills. Sure, Licorice is trading back for the most part. He's very happy to find he's able to do so, but it is slowly turning that matchup a little bit more in favor of Camille. The fact that she has her Triforce before 15 minutes is pretty huge for her. Now Gilius wants to pressure down the bot side of the map. We see the Roam coming in from Fox as well, trying to crack that first turret. Like you said, that often comes off the back of Death Leap. Now they want to enable their bottom lane to start moving around the map, although MASH and Mad Life are not content to try to just give this one up. Gilius and Fox have come around into lane as well, but it looks like all it's going to force here is a party on the bottom side of the map. Licorice and Solo do not have their teleports available, though it looks like Licorice himself is making his way towards the mid lane, whereas Solo has kind of come down here. So although United want to try to brute force this one down, I don't think it's going to happen. They got the five-man bot lane party even without the teleports going on here. And you have to be a little scared if you're Gold Coin United because there's a lot of zoning ultimates available for E United. You can have the Rumble pop his ultimate. You can have the Rengar pop his ultimate, the Sivir, and force them away from that turret, and then they're able to finish it off. It looks like Gold Coin United are choosing to vacate the bot lane turret, maybe sacrifice this one. There's a lot of focus by E United. It's going to be hard to keep this one alive. And you see they're basically giving it up. Yeah, so everybody from Gold Coin United backs away. Licorice did shove up that mid lane. There's a large wave threatening that tower. They decide to give up this bottom lane tower, and it will be that first tower. Another check mark off the checklist here for United's early game. Yeah, but despite that, they're only up 400 gold. And as the game gets later and later, you have to be a little bit scared for how United actually stacks up against Gold Coin's team top, where they have a lot of potential to split up this 1 3 1, allowing Lee Sin a lot of gank uh, opportunities. Cassiopeia not as happy to match in the side lane as the Rise, who has a lot more tools available for being in those long side lanes once those turrets start dropping. I'm actually interested to see how E United react because it was them last week that utilized the Shen, Lee Sin, Rise, 1 3 1 composition in and of themselves with the Lee Sin being able to bounce between different lanes. So if GCU are going to be setting something up very similar with the Camille teleport, with the Rise being able to realm warp in from elsewhere and Santorin to bounce between whatever lane needs that pressure, I want to know how E United respond to it because, like you said, once they get Ahead, they seem fine. They're okay to scrap when they're behind, but we haven't really seen them play from a deficit in a macro sense. Well, we'll have to see what they do. The Dragon is back available. It's an Infernal Drake. Gold Coin United going to start this one off, though. E United doesn't look like they want to give it away for free. Now the top laners are going to scrap with each other here. Both those teleports should be up in just a couple of seconds. The Realm of actually goes in on the Fox, trying to cut him off. Needs a good paralyzing gaze to stun up the entire team. The Soraka Wish comes out. Is he going to be able to melt down Santora? No, the Why? Wild Growth says no. Gilius jumps down on the Lee Sin. Forces the flash out of Mad Life as now they switch targets here. Health bars are dropping low, Mark, but nobody's going down. Oh, and you see at the same time, Solo's gonna pick a fight with Licorice. Might be able to finish him off here. He Ooh. does get the solo kill on a killing spree now. And that's actually huge because there was a wave all the way pushed up in the bot lane there. If Licorice was able to disengage away from Solo, get the TP flank behind, maybe he can actually help turn that fight that was happening down the bot side. Is unable to do so. Solo able to stick onto him. Camille, great for that and takes the kill. Well, you talked about the importance of that Trinity Force early on for Camille's. That top lane trade goes in GCU's favor, and because of that, it's going to want to be in this Infernal Drake. I don't think Unite is going to be able to contest this one. Fox went back to base, still kind of coming in here. Gilius wants to step on a trap. He's going to take a lot of damage. They don't want to give this one up, but I don't think they're going to be able to really contest. It's a teleport coming in from behind, though, but there's no equalizer available. So even though Gold Coin Unite have gotten the dragon, they might be okay to take this fight, but Phoenix is going to have to flash away from this one. They're going and burning on the match, while Fox on the opposite side is fighting Santorin. He gets flashed on by Solo as he goes on a rampage but two kills picked up by United on the backside. They're stays collapsing alive. onto the backside of the map, and the Soraka stays alive, which means the team stays alive. E United with a triple kill for Gilius. A four for one on the side of E United. A very scrappy game so far, Tom. Gold Coin United able to grab the Infernal Dragon. That's huge for them, but they're not able to get away alive. They lose a ton of members of their team. This also allows E United to rotate up into the mid lane and grab their second outer turret of the game is going to give them an even bigger gold lead now, up to a little over 2k. Yeah, 
uh, E United somehow finding the fight here. The teleport's coming in from Licorice. Gilius tries to go for a flash shield. There's no rumble equalizer. How do they win this fight? Well, big problem is Phoenix gets totally separated from the rest of his team, gets chunked out for basically free. A, num a number of his teammates were looking at Fox while he walked forward. He got low enough that eventually Gilius was able to go in and finish him off. Phoenix was a huge member of the team, and once your mid laner goes down, it's hard to win. We talk about Zazel and Soraka being basically unfocused that whole fight. Killing a Soraka early in the fight is extremely important because if she's able to keep healing your Rangar, keep healing your Cassiopeia and the actual damage dealers on your team, it's really hard for Gold Queen United to win a team fight. Well, he hit upon it and champ select this Soraka for Zazel has definitely enabled United's aggressive style to continue to aggress forward and continue to fight no matter how long these fights may go on. So now United, we're approaching the 20 minute mark. They have you know, a gold lead at this point. And when they do have a gold lead, they wind up winning about 91% of those games. So stats tell me anything, Mark. That means that United is sitting pretty in this one. Stats don't lie. The United's going to win. Call it. Move on <laughs> to game two, right? I don't know about that one because they had some pretty exciting fights in this one. Gold Coin United had taken that one fight a little bit earlier on where they turned it around and grabbed the gold lead back from E United. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of these teams can do now that some of the itemization is coming in. Essence Reaver picked up for Sivir, going to has the Zeal item as well, so those crits are going to start stacking up. Caitlyn will be a little bit of a lull here. She only has a rune on Hurricane as we see Phoenix. Got a little bit aggressive with that Realm Warp and actually going to get turned in on by Gilius. His team is coming from their own base. The traps are going to slow him up though and Gold Coin United wisely back away. It's kind of surprising to see that even though the mid laners are no longer mid, the teams are still mostly playing around them. Phoenix mm -hmm. pushing away Vought. Both junglers were hovering around there in case there was a potential dive. And then we see Phoenix trying to open up onto Gilius in his own jungle. United able to disengage that one. Looked to turn it back, unable to do so. Not much going on right now, though we see E United grouped up on the bot side, trying to get some deep vision down now that they have both the mid and bottom outer turrets down. E United themselves, no slouches on vision control, but Gold Coin United have been the team that have had not only the most effective vision control, it's the fact that they clear out opposing wards so often. So we'll see if Mad Life and Santorin continue to group up to deny vision. There's a lot of wards that kind of stop around the river area, and they do wind up trading off on either side. So E United, while they do have the tower advantage, while they do have a slight gold advantage and the kill advantage, they still have to be very careful about crossing the river at this point. The one thing that Gold Coin United does have going well for them is solo up on this top side. We Whew. still open up on the Licorice here, trying to get another solo kill down. Throws Sam down the Torrent's challenge. Coming too. Says, meet me in the Octagon. That's actually a hexagon. He wants to pick it up a kill. Santorin comes in there to help him out. I think he had that one by himself. Yeah, but it's always nice to get a little extra support. You don't have to worry about getting traded back on. And like I was just saying, Solo is the one bright shining factor for Gold Coin United. It will be hard to find anyone who can match him in this split push. Both people who would match him in the Cassiopeia, most likely not, really just the Rumble, are both magic damage dealers. So he's able to itemize against that if he wants to get a hex trick or something. Instead, going for the full offensive build, basically, trying to get his... Uh, T Titanic Hydra are done as fast as he can and he's starting to get out of control and so if they keep getting these kinds of advantages for solo they can basically just group up as four you don't really need to keep splitting the rise if you don't need to and just let uh, Camille start mowing down these turrets. Ah, solo's favorite silo play the 4v4 with two other people on the side doing things. Yeah he seemed <laughs> very enthusiastic about that in the interview last week. Although that Camille, like you mentioned, getting rather big. Solo himself has kind of fancied himself to be a versatile player, although his most success has been on champions that can kind of go into that split push and fight a lot, fight pretty much alone. The Jace, the Renekton, we've seen him be very successful on those so far. Right, and if we talk about uh, what E United can do to kind of try and match them. You see them put the Cassiopeia up there, and she might have a better time with the 1v1 holding under turret than, than the Rumble, who has to risk getting dove, but. She doesn't have to teleport. She can't really match if Gold Coin United try to force a play down the bot side then. Here we see Phoenix opening up onto Licorice as well. He's having a tough time in the Rumble. Yeah, actually, Licorice having to flash away from this one. He's going to want to get in the Blast Cone over the wall. Phoenix will not flash forward to chase after that, but that's going to be Summoner Spell Burn. Licorice definitely struggling in his first big game, so to speak. Game one of the Challenger Finals. Hey man, two, he's, five, turned six. Two, he's turned around two 1v2s, but he's getting picked on this game. I mean, he's definitely getting picked on, but that's kind of what happens when you take this carry versus carry matchup, is you have mm -hmm. to be aware of the fact that you are in a much more volatile lane matchup. And he did get baited into a lot of those fights. Uh, Camille's an extremely strong champion for starting them out with both the long range hook shot that she has, as well as her ultimate being able to isolate people. And now Fox actually able to push in and get the kill solo. Felt like uh, Solo was able to sense out that there was some aggression coming from Gilius. You see him hovering around the top side. You know that United likes playing with those two together, so 
he intelligently backed off there, not risking getting those. Yeah, so that will be the third and final outer tower on the map, going in favor of United. But now, Pensive Trade with Fox, he's getting the recall off the exhaust, nice goes turn. down. Ooh, he dodges out on the stun from the paralyzing gaze. The Soraka which comes out as well. Solo trying to flash after Fox, loses vision in the brush, but Fox able to get the 1v1 kill. How many times has the Soraka ultimate come up huge in these 1v1 situations? Once again, Zazel is able to keep the member on the other side of the map alive and buy them enough time to be able to fight these situations off. And Fox picks up the solo kill basically because of that. Well, and now it's going to be another Infernal Drake spawning on the map. And this time, United will have the man advantage as Solo did go down just as this one spawned. Fox is not quite yet in the area, although they do know he's coming from base. So Gokuan United wisely back away. It's going to be an Infernal Drake going over to the side of E-United. It's huge for E-United to be able to pick up that kill and then pick up the Infernal Dragon. Going to help scale them up. Both teams, very heavy damage comps. So obviously, they're extra excited to get those Infernal Dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, Rumble will be able to use it. Obviously, Rengar, Cassiopeia, Sivir. Basically, everybody's going to benefit aside for poor old Soraka. Yeah, well. But she does have the Ocean Drake, which is extremely useful on a Soraka, actually. That's right. She's got both of our favorite tricks, the Infernal and the Ocean. But we're going to take another look at this one. Solo thought that he could go in on Fox as he was recalling here. And Gilius was away, showing on the bottom side. But. Cassiopeia that turns us around. Yeah, I mean, Solo has the nice turn, but there's the, the heal that comes in. You see, he would definitely would have died. He flashes and actually misses the sweep there because he wasn't able to have any vision. He thought Fox was going to be further down, so he flashed forward. It actually puts him out of range of it, and then he tries to hook shot in, but it's a little too slow, a little too telegraphed. Fox is able to keep DPSing him down, and Solo dies in the 1v1. Well, Fox himself now, 3 2 and 3 on the Cassiopeia. Morella Namakon, Abyssal Scepter, and an extra needlessly large rod in his inventory take a look across the map at Phoenix, his rise has been super effective in the laning phase. He was still going toe-to-toe -to -toe and even bullying around Fox's Cassiopeia. But since then, his Realm Wharves have been kind of zoning Realm Wharves, and they haven't necessarily had the same impact as some of the ones we've seen from players like Fox on the rise. Definitely been a little less uh, coordination on the side of Gold Coin United in some of these skirmishes that have broken out. Uh, and they did trade the bot turret at the same time that United was forcing around that top side. Uh, Phoenix was able to grab that one, but they haven't been able to generate many of their own profitable plays, uh, aside from ones around Solo, basically. And even then, a lot of those have been traded back or even gone sour. Well, they are going to put Solo on the bottom side of the map for the time being, and it will be Licorice matching up in the 1v1 against him again. Meanwhile, Rise has gone to the top side, so a 1-3-1 one, one has now been started by Gold Coin United, although we do have the Sivir moving down towards the mid lane. Has the pieces for an Infinity Edge and already has the Phantom Dancer and Essence Reaver, so those ricochet crits to clear out those minion waves, it's almost time for Deathly to be the one-man wave to their show. I mean, that's kind of the story about Deathly, is you're not really paying attention to him. There seems to be all this crazy stuff happening around him, and every time you look at him, he's CSing well, he hasn't yeah. died, he had the number one KDA in the entire Challenger series, so this dude always performs, but he's not the flashiest player in the scene. Ooh, Gilead's gonna run back through the Realm with the throw of the hunt on and cuts off Phoenix. Now Phoenix might be stuck here. Licker's gonna come in with a teleport. The Equalizer cuts off nice the escape. Equalizer. They're not gonna be able to run through that, and he pops his on his Hourglass. Wild growth to keep Phoenix alive. Cassiopeia going forward, but now Solo's gonna throw down the Hextech Ultimatum in the middle of everybody, but he will go down first. Not able to clean up the kill on the Fox, but they will wind up trading top lane for Jungler. An extremely scrappy one for one there with a lot of summoner spells being burned. It was a good job of E United to kind of cut off a lot of the escape routes of Gold Coin United, but they were not actually able to finish off many members. Once again, we saw Zazel Soraka coming up huge as well, keeping a lot of people healthy when they start getting low, but hard for either team to really guarantee kills. And we see Gold Coin United doesn't look like they want to give up Nope. Quite yet around the mid lane. Red buff on MASH, red buff on Phoenix, and the whimsy there from Mad Life Lulu means they're going to fancy themselves to chase down members of E-United. Getting a little bit pushy in the mid lane, but Gold Coin United will just wave clear and back away themselves. The amount of times that we've said Zazel Soraka and then something good about the side of E-United makes me wonder how that champion actually got through, considering Mad Life played it twice himself last week. Yeah, it might have just been the kind of situation where Gold Coin United is much more concerned about splitting up that Rengar Lulu combination. As we'll take another look at this team fight. I mean, it's an extremely scary combination, but the Soraka seems like it's also a bit of an issue here. Yeah, and this is a realm warp being used by Phoenix. He's the only one that takes it, and Gilius is this. I'm just gonna jump on your back line. Yeah, it makes it hard for Phoenix to actually find a threat while he himself will not be getting hit. So he has to run away there. Licorice, Flame Spitter's the wrong way. It actually would have been pretty useful if he was able to be facing forward towards the enemy team, because they had to run through it after he cut them off with his equalizer. Solo gets a nice flank, not having to burn his teleport. Able to get a lot of members low, but not actually able to finish anyone off. Maybe he could have targeted a better uh, opponent there. Uh, he goes down, but they also do kill Gilius, so not the worst overall, one for one. They do get the teleport advantage off the back of that play, so probably favors Gold Coin United in the end. Yeah, so scrappy fights. 
Make for scrappy trades here as now E-United. Still with a, a small advantage, only about a 2,000 gold lead, but cresting about the 30 minute mark. And they're starting to approach the point in time where United won all of their games last week. This is funnily enough, a weird amalgamation of both team styles where the game is not getting blown open at 30 minutes quite the way we see out of E United, but it's not as slow as the Gold Coin United games where you see three kills at 30 minutes or something like that. So it's this combination of E United still playing really, really aggressive, but Gold Coin United being talented enough to match up with that aggression. No, so actually on the hunt being topped here by Deathly, looks like they're trying to fancy themselves a fight in the mid lane. Equalizer goes out. They already burned the wild growth on the mash. And Zazel gonna throw down the silence field from Soraka to try to force everyone away. That's a key ultimate for a fight here. They still have the Rengar ultimate on cooldown. They used that to start that off. The Sivir ultimate got used, but at the same time, Solo's just been content to split push in the bottom side. I mean, there's a nice idea out of E United. They are down teleport advantage. They want a fight around the mid lane or the Baron buff that forces Solo to match them. Unfortunately, they don't have quite enough CC to lock anyone down. You see the Rumble ultimate, the Rengar ultimate, and Sivir ultimate used to try and open up onto mash. All they have to trade back for that is the Lulu ultimate, which buys enough time for Solo to push down the bottom all on his own here. And now that they see Rumble trying to answer that wave, they teleport into the Baron. Yeah, so Baron's going to be started up here by Gold Coin United. Cassiopeia flashes forward, gets the Paralyzing Gaze on, but the Baron burning, and that's going to go over to GCU. But can they win Would the they ensuing lose? fight? The heal is already out the wish from Soraka. Now Phoenix getting exhausted and cut off results in a double kill for Fox. A double kill for E United, but Gold Coin United secure the Baron. That actually brings the gold lead back to even in their favor, so you gotta think they're pretty happy with that right now. An Infernal Dragon will be spawning, so E United will probably be able to grab that one. If you wanna look at it that way, it's basically two kills and an Infernal for maybe. Well, it looks like they're going for this mid-turn instead while Cassiopeia solos down the dragon. A good call out of E United here. Yeah, at the same time, those solos put pushing away in that top lane, getting yet another outer tower for the side of Gold Coin United. So all in all, it's a lost fight, a Baron, and a tower for a tower, two kills, and maybe more as Gilius, as soon as Thurl the Hunt is back and the on the hunt combination jumps on the Santor and he's fighting the equalizer. The Locky comes out. Can he stay alive? The flash for from Licorice, he wants blood, but he's gonna get turned into a little snowman under tower, and Licorice goes down. He gets too aggressive. He pops his rumble silence on himself. He accidentally autos the turret as well. Unsure if he would have been able to get the kill on Santorin either way, but he goes down under the turret, getting slightly too aggressive. Now that the two dead members of Gold Coin United have respawned, they have a 4v5. What can they get with it now that they also have the Baron buff? Well, it looks like their sights are set on that very low HP outer mid lane tower. They're the last outer tower in the game, though E United are not too keen to give this one up for free, but I don't know how much they can actually defend here with all the members of Gold Coin United grouping up with Solo flanking from the side. They gotta give that one away. Yeah, United you know, need to be careful here. They can't risk having the game get totally blown open. It has swung all the way back to about a thousand and a half gold advantage for Gold Coin United. They have to take their punches here, deal with the fact that they're gonna have to give up a little bit more gold because they don't have their rumble. So that's going to be a second tower in the mid lane going down. Gold Coin United the back of that sneaky, sneaky Baron attempt, sure, they lost a couple of members, but it's been well worth it so far. Definitely some sh impressive shot calling out of both teams. E United recognizing that they have a TP disadvantage, so they try and force a fight. Gold Coin United realizing that Rumble has to go back now, force onto the Baron. And then even after that Baron situation, you see Solo actually split up onto the top side to grab a turret while the rest of E United go mid and Dragon. So really impressive shot calling out of both teams this game. Well, both of these teams are relying on a bit of their jungle and support synergy in that shot calling role. We talked to Gilius after the win last week, and he said, it feels really great to have a team that when I want to make one of those aggressive plays doesn't question it, they just go for it. He knows he has to step up as a voice because Fox is a little bit more of a passive voice in the mid lane himself as Gilius once again goes for an aggressive play on the Mad Life there. Whereas the Gold Coin United, Santorin himself has said, between me and Mad Life, we get a lot of vision control, but he's been the one that's been calling a lot of those objectives and wants to be known as one of those team leaders. Both of these styles kind of clashing together here, and it's making for an exciting game. A yeah, very exciting game so far. And like you said, Gilius definitely has been aggressive this whole game, always opening up onto somebody. Uh, and you're gonna have to see what he tries to do now. Gold Coin United look like they're gonna group up as five to try and get a push down this mid lane hopefully getting their first inhibitor turret of the game, and United doesn't want to let them do that. Well, that sound means that Rengar wants to hunt someone down. Zipper popping her own means they're on the hunt, and it's Phoenix that they're Great after. Equalizer. equalizer rips across the team, but Santorin's going to want to kick and Fox back through the Hextech ultimatum. A shutdown comes across for Solo. Licorice goes golden on the backside, and will go down before he can take out Phoenix. They are going to finally take down the Rise, but it's cost them their top laner and their mid lane. A two for one in favor of Gold Coin United, but what else can they get? They are slightly low 
and E United does have a Sivir with a lot of ricochets and crits to get people down low. Also, the Soraka to heal people up. It might be hard for them to actually get anything done, though they are going for Deathly. Solo with a hook shot in, chunks Deathly for half of his HP just off of one attack there. He's full already. Yeah, he's already got the heals coming up from Soraka, but they flash forward and try to take down Deathly. He is finally going to go down. They've traded one for one so far, and now it's Zazel getting extremely low. He and Gilius have to run away. Oh, Mash goes oh, down. Oh, Mash dies to the tower or something there. Looks like the GCU is going to be able to clean this enough, but not as clean as they wanted to. Yeah, I'm not sure clean it up is the right word. Make it even messier. <laughs> they do grab the turret. They do grab a couple kills. They only lose, I believe, Mad Life and Mash for that. Oh. See, Liquor is trying to punish this. Yeah, not die. done. The teleport comes in. The home guards are on. There's going to be Solo going in there. Gets the sweep across, but he's going to start burning from the flame spitter. If he lands the rocket, there might be a chase. A lot of range. Does not wind up landing that one. Tries to fancy himself to Sam Rengar. There's a thrill the hunt being popped with a Rise Realm Warp coming in. This is this is getting a little messy now, Mark. Rise is teleported in, but never mind. He's just walking away. Good Less call. Messy. Good call by Phoenix. <laughs> Don't keep fighting. You guys have grabbed a mid lane inhibitor turret. You can take your time now. Reset. Chill out and then go back for that open inhibitor any point now. We'll take another look at that fight. I like the idea of E United just going here. Don't give them time to set up. Don't give them time to get comfortable with all those Kate traps. You see they're a little bit all over the place right now. That allows E United to actually open up a great equalizer, but Solo and Santorn do a great job flanking onto Fox and blow him up extremely early in the fight. That's a lot of the damage available for E United. And then definitely does a good job getting a lot of damage in here, able to finish off Phoenix. If they didn't grab that kill there, this fight might have been a disaster because that 4v3 hold was very, very hard. If you had Phoenix alive in there as well, basically impossible. And Gold Coin United, a little over aggressive with the dive, but they kind of have to be because you can't let a Sivir walk up and wave clear. So you have to force her totally away from the minion wave. Mm -hmm. But definitely played it pretty well and didn't actually go down. Zazel also trying his best to keep him alive. Still hasn't died this game despite <laughs> having a lot of team fights. Yeah, this is the Soraka that blew both of her summoner spells at like level three and still hasn't died yet. Right, I mean, great game out of Zazel and Deathly so far, honestly. United has been playing pretty well, but Gold Coin United seems like they have had slightly better macro over the course of the game, mm -hmm. able to convert their advantages into more tangible objectives. We saw when E United had that teleport advantage. Didn't get a ton off of it. We actually saw Licorice go down because Gold Coin United attacked that global advantage. And then when they got their own, they were able to force a Baron buff. We're going to see another fight this time around mid lane. Well, this time around is going to be e United forcing a fight that Gold Coin United was trying to set up. They tried to jump on the match, but Gilius himself already good and low. They wound up flashing forward with a paralyzing gaze onto Phoenix, but Fox is going to give up his life for that one. The Realm Warp comes in, but is anyone going to deliver? Yes, it's Phoenix. He's dropping down extremely low. Has the Wild Growth to keep him alive, yeah, though. Hextech Ultimatum goes down on the Deathly. Phoenix is going to pick up a kill on Gilius. Sivir winds up falling. They finally kill the Soraka, and Licorice has gone golden, but he's going down. A Triple kill for Phoenix. An ace for Gold Coin United as well. With that open inhibitor down the mid lane, how much can they get? Can they actually end the game? It's 30 seconds until Fox is alive. They might be able to actually end it, though. It looks like they're prioritizing getting more objectives down with it. Solo going to go for this open inhibitor by himself while the rest of the team goes down the bot lane, start pushing that one, and hopefully grab a second inhibitor. We still got about three and a half minutes before Gold Coin United catches up to their average game time mark. So they're going to go for the complete win here, making sure they have an insurance plan, push down that mid lane inhibitor, push down the bottom lane one, although there's still 10 seconds left, so they may actually be able to finish the game. Yeah, they might be able to. They don't have their AD carry available in match, but they still have plenty of damage with the help of Solo, like one of the best turret pushers in the game on Camille. They're going to be trying to finish this one off. Fox is the only one alive. Santorin Ooh. picks them back so they can focus on the Nexus. They kick back Fox, and that's going to be the focus on the Nexus. That means Gold Coin United are going to go forward one game here, taking down E United in game number one. You see the aggression of E United getting turned around on them that time. Gilius opens up that team fight at the very end, trying to find a pick, unable to do so as he backs out. Gold Coin United moves forward, and Fox looks at the aggressive flash Cassiopeia ult, hoping to stun up various members, but doesn't actually get anyone. That allows them to focus him down easily, and then once Fox is dead, once again, the Cassiopeia dying early in a fight, it's too hard for United to actually win one. And Gold Coin United did a really good job of preying upon those overly aggressive tendencies from E United. We posed the question of E United, when they are even, when they're slightly behind, they continue to go very, very aggressive with their plays. But how do they play when they're behind in a macro sense? And it seems to be the answer is we just keep fighting, but it didn't work. I mean, most of their ideas, I didn't hate that last one. A little bit of an overforce. You can maybe try and start splitting them up and, and look for a better uh, opportunity there because obviously Gold Coin United was just grouped up. But most mm -hmm. of the other fights that they picked, I, for the most part, agree with. Uh, they just got slightly outplayed. The the one big thing was that jungle invade by Gilius. Uh, I mean, that is the kind of gave Gold Coin United their foothold in that early game after that bad jungle fight that happened for Gold Coin United. So 
after it stabilized, it looked like, for the most part, Gold Coin United were the superior macro team. Yeah, overall, across the map, the vision control was great. So even though United had some small advantages, you know, about 2,000 gold around the 20-minute mark, they weren't really able to push forward with any of that control because they were moving into a dark side of the map. And even when they did finally establish a little bit of control after that Baron call that Gold Coin United still kind of came out a little bit ahead for, they continued with their overaggression and wound up dying underneath an uh, inhibitor tower. Yeah, I think that was that was another big one. Like like I said, if you let the Caitlyn set all our traps up and abuse that range advantage, it, it's very hard to find an opportunity to get a fight then. Because even if you get the flank with say the Rumble and uh, Rengar, you have to run through that trap line with the rest of your your follow up, and it's too hard to do that. So I like the idea of attacking it aggressively early on, but none of their engages were quite clean enough, as well as Fox getting caught out. You no, know, also that at the back, the fact that Solo got some of these early game advantages, even though we did see that Licorice in the top lane was able to kind of turn some of these trades around. The gold was funneled into solo and even after they were able to back away from those caitlin front lines they were running into a hextech ultimatum and solo pretty much did work that game yeah i think there's a lot of resources given to him to try and carry but he was able to do so with all that attention he received early on all right and now there's something great for me i don't get to say this much but uh, very often but for more on that gold coin win let's send it over to freaking zyrene for some post-game analysis thank you very much tom great cast so far and uh, yeah let's talk about the fact that gcu got what I feel like it was a comeback win, honestly, where United, kind of true to form, won a bunch of early skirmishes. Yeah, I feel like the compositions as well played into this pretty heavily, because United has one that doesn't have a tank on it, so the Soraka's kind of, you know, making sure that everybody is healed up. Then we see Executioner's Callings come in eventually, and so that heal, you basically just cut into whatever tankiness they had, right. and the Rengar is a diver. So as soon as the Rengar and Gilius jumps in, which he was doing a lot of, the Camille will enter the back line, be in the middle of four squishies, and because Solo was set up early, they don't really have any that deals with that. Yeah, and you talk about, you know, a diver being here. You've got a Lulu support here, but you know, piloted by Mad Life, no less, who's of course, you know, great reflexes, great mechanical skill overall. And you just kind of stop finding the one shots. No longer does the backline get killed. You were seeing for the last maybe 20 minutes of this game, Gilius jumps onto MASH and MASH pops him up in the air thanks to wild growth and kites away and looks just fine. Even got a hexring to make sure it doesn't add a rumble at the yeah. backside of it. And and it just felt like, yeah, even it ran out of steam. Yeah, and I feel like the build from Gilius as well, a little bit more on the, the tankier side, because he had to actually fill in that sure. role. So he couldn't go like full lethality, kill people, Rengar, right? So it definitely fell off. The Lulu, I think, is a premier pick on 7.4. Oh, wow. I think when we move to 7.5, Lulu becomes very high priority, keeping people alive, having those long duration fights. But the Soraka is somebody that's interesting, because it's not really played too much in the LCS. Right. But... It's been like Zazel's go-to champion for the last four games. So it yeah. has actually worked out for him. But this game, I feel like he played it really well. I actually think he was the best performer in the game. I agree. But it wasn't able to walk away with the win. Yeah, Zazel was a player. We were like, all right, player of the game. Probably this one was going to go to, go to Zazel. Unfortunately, his team, of course, lost. But yeah, unkilled for a very long time. And it seemed to fit the play style again. Very skirmish heavy. But GCU... Got the scale in going. Instead of winning the team fights, our first replay, I do believe it's going to be ready. It's a 33 minute victory for GCU as we have the mid lane skirmish. You can see just they can't really kill the teammates off. Yeah, they have the dive in the back line there, but then it's a split fight. And it's just kind of the pickups here where you know, they're trying to get Gillies as it goes out and then the bounces. So it ends up being a two for one. But I feel like that's just a fight where these skirmishes are now becoming team fights. Mm -hmm. And Gold Coin United, when I was watching their games earlier, uh, I feel like they're a little bit better of a team fight team when they group up as five. But I feel like United are really damn good at skirmishing. I feel like they are a team that is defined by their skirmishing. They're two on twos, they're three on threes, yeah. where you see early ones where Licorice just comes down and walks from top lane and starts getting them a lead because it's like, why is this guy here? Then he has TP advantage, yep. then nothing really happens with that. But those are opportunities that this team from United has where if they're winning those skirmishes early, they can snowball and they've had really fast games in the past. Yeah. But that's not what happened here. They ended up having some lost team fights in GCU, I feel like, did it right, where Solo split pushes, yeah. where he beats the Rumble every single time because he got help. And then when the team fights happen, they just have a stronger diver. Yeah, it's worth pointing out. I want to kind of tunnel in on the top lane matchup, actually. A uh, couple of different thoughts here. So one, uh, just kind of simplify the, the situation. Uh, United seems like a first 20 minutes sort of team. They're, they're very good at getting into the skirmishes and then trying to turn that into game victories. On the other side, GCU is wait out the first 20 minutes and then win through 20 to 40 with better rotations. And you extrapolate that a little bit and you say, okay, well, the team with the better split pusher, the better top lane one-on-one, -on -one, you can start playing an open map a bit better. We saw Santorum put a lot of effort into winning solo his lane on the Camille versus Rumble matchup. And by a late game, it got to the point where the Camille did get ahead, could win any one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the Rumble's building armor and gets one shot by a rise in the late game, of course. And, and now solo gets to kind of win the map for his team with good TP plays. And I, I want to talk about Camille briefly because when she came out in the game, blatantly overpowered. 
Yeah. Really, really strong champion. Right now in 7.4, she's not 100% pick ban in pro play. She's up there, granted. Her win rate is sub 50%. Like, this is a strong champion, but it's not bonkers OP. Plenty of pro teams are willing to let the champion slide through picks bans, but this was a Camille who got to be 10th picked, counter picked into, got camped for, lo and behold, gets to carry team fights. Yeah, it's basically the environment was perfect for the Camille pick to come through, had a good matchup, had the team actually camp for her, and she's not like this gigantic dominant laning four. She's not going to win you the lane. She yeah. does need help. She doesn't have wave clear. People were maxing like three points, four points W to actually live through the lane, whereas Solo has the luxury of going Q max into E because he gets help, and then they start getting him kills, and he starts snowballing, so he has a lot more damage at that mid-game point, which gets him more kills, which gets him going, so yeah. it ends up being a big force in that mid-late game. Yeah, I thought Solo was huge. I thought he played mechanically in the fights really well. You see several clips of him juking to dodge a cast B ultimate, or he would ult to, to dodge like cast B Qs and the poisons and whatnot. We have one final replay to show up. It is the final team fight, I believe, the GCU ace in the mid lane, and, and again, Solo was just like a very large diving threat that helped turn a lot of these fights better. Yeah, and you can see just E United are the ones who start this one off. Gilius jumps in, he's trying to get some cooldowns out. And then Fox jumps in, doesn't quite get the stun there. And then it's Kite back, Licorice's ulti is now a dividing one. And then they re-engage and Phoenix by himself, almost gets destroyed there. But then they just don't have the damage, they don't have the follow-up. Mad Life is able to actually get the wild growth off and the Lulu providing the shielding and making sure that the fight is longer than you expect it to be. But that's exactly what happens again. Solo dives backline, goes on the Sivir, goes on the, uh, the Soraka as well, and it just ends up being a, kind of a slaughter there at the second half of the fight. Yeah, and you see, you know, from the 21 minute mark onward, the gold lead just stays the same, and then 30 minute arc hits, and there's GCU winning team fights. And that's kind of been the issue. If United can't get that lead bigger than two and a half thousand, you know those those tools are going to come back in. Yeah, and I feel like these teams kind of don't do much for the first 10 minutes whenever I was watching both of them. Yeah. They're kind of slow starters, and then as soon as something happens for EU United, they'll try to ignite the game and try to get things going with their mid lane jungle combo, and that's like 10 to 25, and then after that, that's when they start losing steam, and that's where GCU actually picks up. So this is going to be a really interesting match. Yeah. If EU United can actually close out sure. early, and if GCU can actually you know take the game back into their hands at the 25-minute point. Right, absolutely. So we're going to see if that can happen. Of course, this is a very close match. I do expect it to go maybe close to five games here, but we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, of course, it's time for Game 2 between EU United and Gold Coin United. You're watching the North American Challenger Spring Finals. See ya. Are you doing the trap thing where auto auto? You know you hear me better yeah, when yeah, you yeah. that on than off. I had to think about that one. I'm okay, coming, coming, let's go, let's fight them! Go, 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 kill them! You win, you win, you win! Rise, rise, rise! Can we go rise? rise of silence, rise of silence. Finish the mill, finish the mill, finish the mill. Kill rise, no flash, no flash, no flash! He's slowed, he's slowed, he's slowed. Go, go, go! Let's go, let's go! Mad Life gets kill credit for that. Licorice teleport in, but Mash is roamed up as well, and E United are feeding kills over to GCU. Two kills picked up by E United on the backside. They're stays collapsing alive. onto the backside of the map, and the Soraka stays alive, which means the team stays alive. Can he stay alive? The flash throw from Licorice, he wants blood, but he's gonna get turned into a little snowman under tower, and Licorice goes down. Alive. Santorum Ooh. picks the back so they can focus the Nexus. They kick back Fox, and that's gonna be the focus on the Nexus. That means Gold Coin United are going to go forward one game here.